this little tool is called a whisk and a pick, and it is a very useful thing for a musketman to have while on campaign. Why is that? <laughs> that difficult to see where this thing gets its name of a whisk and a pick, as each one of these units would have these two constituent parts. Uh, there is some debate around the thing which would hold it all together. You see, in this case, we have a bit of uh, brass chain. I'll hold that up a bit closer so you can see nice and proper. Uh, there are some reenacting groups which have just a simple, you know, bit of white leather which keeps these two things together. In fact, that's what my... Uh, that's what my Napoleonic group used to use until we recently switched over to uh, not quite this chain design. It's a little bit different. You know, there are some variations in how the uh, brush is held on and, uh, you know, the, the thickness of the chain, things like that. You know, little minor differences. Um, we recently swapped over to that from the white leather because, actually, I think it was a, an archaeological find at Waterloo where the uh, Coldstream Guards were sport, uh, fighting and, you know, they found a similar example. So again, while there are different examples, you know, different portrayals, different interpretations of exactly what material would be used to keep all three of these constituent uh, pieces together, you know, again, some chains are thicker, some always little bit, uh, little variations. There are some things about this little tool which are always the same, and that is primarily, again, that we have a brush and a prick. Uh, so. Exactly what would these two things be useful? Well, effectively, this is a tool to keep your musket firing while out in the field, to help keep it clean and keep it firing. You can see here it has a little loop on the side. So what exactly is that for? What's the purpose of that being there? Well, uh, it's largely there to keep the thing uh, on your person and to keep it close to, well, where you need it. You know, you always want to have the ends here, the actual units, uh, more or less, we'll say, you know, right around here on the body, around somewhere in this area, because, of course, when you, you know, after you fire a musket and come down to the prime and load, that's where it's going to be. So, the little uh, loop here is used either, either you can keep it around a button on the side, you know, you can sort of go behind the button and uh, have it rest just underneath, or if you happen to be wearing a cross belt, as we would have in the Napoleonic Wars, of course you're going to have a uh, single plate which stands, you know, in the middle to keep the entire system attached and together, uh, and you can loop this sort of thing around onto the back of the buckle, you know, where the little uh, loop, hook, whatever you want to call it. Uh, th there's a place where you can have it sort of notched in to keep it attached underneath your belts. So this loop being used to effectively keep it in place on one's person, what are the actual bits of equipment used for? Well, the brush is quite simple. I've never actually used the brush in the field, but uh, it can be an important part if you're actually, you know, uh, shall we say, well, a full-time soldier. It is used quite simply to brush clean the uh, pan on your fire lock. You know, the, after you fire a flintlock, you know, even just once, there is an immense amount of fouling and, uh, and black powder residue which builds up. If you fire, you know, a couple of times in a day, then all of a sudden, that thing becomes very, very filthy very, very quickly. Black powder clumps together, and it really does manage to build up a very, very thick residue at the bottom. And if you, uh, fi if you find that, uh, especially on like a humid day, that um, your musket isn't firing, it may well be because it's just, you know, gunked over completely with this thick, um, sort of oily residue that's always left behind. You can use the brush to try and clean out as much of that stuff in the field as you possibly can. Again, that's why it's being kept you know, right at your side, as you come down to the prime and load, you can use it to just try and scrape away and clean out as, m as much of that um, fouling as you can possibly get, and that might help the gun to continue firing. It might help you to clear out the pan to actually uh, reload your piece. So what about this one? We have the pick. Well, also, very uh, simply, it is used to help keep your firelock clean out in the field. Uh, the same sort of fouling that builds up in your um, in the pan of your piece can also uh, really gunk up and uh, and cover even the touch hole to your musket. And of course, if your touch hole is um, uh, is is covered up, is uh, you know blocked effectively by the powder residue, then every single time you fire, you're going to have a nice little uh, you know puff of smoke appear right in front of your face. But there's not going to be an actual bang to 
via the piece. Because of course the sparks won't be able to travel through the touch hole and ignite the powder within the actual gun. So if that is the case, you need to have something to unblock the hole. And that's where this little tool comes in handy. So again, it's kept on your side, muskets down there. If you notice, oh man, I'm not firing, look over. Oh look, there's no smoke coming out of the touch hole. Maybe it's blocked. You can just sort of shove it in there, sort of wiggle around, try and uh, punch through that residue. And hopefully, again, that'll get you firing. Uh, that is a much more common problem, I find. Like I said, I've never actually had to use the brush here while in the field. I I've used it occasionally while, um, you know, while cleaning. This is, a, this is actually a new one, which is why it isn't dirty. The last one was in a much worse state. Um, I've never used the brush in the field before. I've used it later on while cleaning. But uh, I have, on numerous occasions, had to use this, uh, the, the, the pick. Uh, you can actually notice after you fire a musket and you bring it back down, you can look down and immediately tell if the touch hole is clogged or not, because if it isn't, you will see a steady stream of smoke just sort of shooting or jetting out of the touch hole, because of course it's you know very hot back there and not all of it's going to be going out of the top. There's always going to be a little bit of smoke just sort of shooting out of the corner. If there's nothing at all coming out, odds are the touch hole is clogged, so you know give it a little cleaning out. You can also use the pick here to plug the touch hole. You know, it's, uh, it's a little bit more narrow oftentimes than the touch hole, so you have to wrap a little bit of cloth around it or some such. But if you shove it into the touch hole, then you can sort of seal it off entirely. Now, why would you want to seal off or plug your touch hole? Because we were just explaining earlier how that prevents the thing from firing, how that's actually something that you want to very much prevent. But when you do want to be able to plug the barrel is when you're cleaning it later on back at home, or, you know, in the case of an actual, you know, in my case as a reenactor when I get back home, or in the case of uh, an actual soldier when you're back at camp, I suppose. Uh, you can plug the touch hole, and then when you pour water down the barrel, as you pour usually warm water down the barrel, as the sort of initial stages of cleaning out all of the massive amounts of fouling and uh, powder that residue that you have built up inside the gun, uh, this prevents the water from jetting out of the touch hole, which, you know, just makes everything a lot more messy as opposed to cleaner. And uh, in the end, uh, you want to, when you're actually, you know, cleaning out the, bar the, the barrel by pouring the water in and then sort of spilling it back out, you uh, don't want it all to collect on the bottom and, uh, you know, gather around the touch hole, which is sort of what would happen if you allow the water to jet out every single time. So, there we have it, the whisk and pick, an immensely useful little tool to help keep your musket firing while out there in the field. Uh, and also, I should say, uh, alright, I do have one little story to tell before we, before we wrap things up here. Uh, they're also very, very easy to lose if you're not careful. And I imagine that that is the reason why they would have this little loop to keep it attached onto the person, and why the development of having it underneath the belt buckle was certainly a lot more useful than having it just loosely hanging on top of a button. Because uh, I found one, at one event, it was, um, it was Sturbridge Village, actually, and I happen to have uh, footage of this event on my, um, on the channel here, first person type thing. Uh, at one point, uh, my musket was just, it was just not cooperating at all. So I was trying to clean it out. I was actually using the brush to just try and scrape away any bit of residue that I could find on the actual hammer or in the pan or where, what have you. So I was sitting there trying to clean out the musket and I realized, oh man, I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to change the flint out or what have you. Um, I didn't have enough time to, you know, Put the musket down to finick away to put it back and everything. So I just, you know, in a in sort of a uh, in a fit of stress and um, in, a, in, a, in a bit of a rush because we were in light infantry tactics and we were sort of running all over the place at this time. Uh, I shove the thing in my teeth. Ah, uh, I take out my musket tool. I attempt to do all of that. I realize ah, that's not working either. I, I I fumble and I try and put the musket tool back and something happens. I forgot what it was, but uh, some sort of a command was given. We end up you know, being, uh, springing up and falling back from our position. And at some point during that, I didn't even notice it at the time, I happened to, uh, let go and the thing drops to the ground and I, I lo that's how I lost my, uh, my first set of, uh, whisk and pick because I, I happened to not have it properly fastened at the time just because it was a bit too frustrating trying to get it back on there when there was so much going on. So when you're actually out there in the field, so to say, and when you're firing away and when there's things happening and noise and cannon and, you know, in an actual event, people dying all around you, it can be very, very stressful. And keeping track of fiddly little things like this is, um, is a rather difficult thing to do.
So, all right, th there you are. You, you've had my story with the whisk and pick. You, uh, you got me to put it in my mouth for whatever reason. Oh, God. Um, well, until the next time, my dear viewer, I am and I shall remain your most humble and obedient of servants.